Hi, welcome to First Pour Wine. I'm Nick. And I'm Leanne. And uh, on this episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about South American wines. Uh, now, before we get into that, Leanne's one of my friends from college, so why don't you tell everybody uh, watching along at home a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, I did some wine classes while at RIT, just like Nick. I took uh, Wines of the World 1 and 2 and Wine and Food Pairing. Uh, it pretty much made it so I kind of decided that wine was pretty cool. There's a lot of culture and history behind it um, and definitely a lot to discover so I'm always on a quest to try uh, and enjoy new wines. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, and that's a great way to travel is actually through wine so maybe today we'll get a little more experience with South America. Um, now on the right here we've got a Torontes and on the left we have a Melbeck. Now the Torontes is from Argentina. Now typically most people associate Argentina with actually red wines. However, one of their biggest grapes is actually Torontes, which produces a very floral, very acidic, uh, dry white. A little bit like Sauvignon Blanc, not as much green, not as much cat pee. Um, but it's a very enjoyable uh, wine, especially closer to summer, but it's not bad for fall either. Mm -hmm. And now uh, Leanne's got a bottle of Castillero del Diablo Malbec. Um, it's from Chile. Uh, Chile is known for their variety of. Nope. Do that, you know. um, <laughs> Chile is known for their variety of uh, terroir. Uh, they have everything from mountains, deserts, uh, sea coasts, and just flat plains. So pretty much any sort of grape you want to be stubborn and try to grow can probably be found there. Yeah, it's a pretty cool place, thanks to all those glaciers forming out. Mm -hmm. Now this cork looks like it might be a little bit trouble, because I've never seen a black synthetic cork. Alright, there we go. So we're going to actually be trying this one first, because as everyone should remember at home, right before red, unless of course one of them is sweet, in which case you'll drink it after. Yep. And now, uh, would you actually like to do the honors while sure. I get this back off of here? So now these glasses are new, and uh, they're huge. So, just a uh, heads up, if you have really big glassware, you want to pour to the widest part of the glass, but uh, in the case of these, that would actually get us rather uh, blotted. So, yeah, how many did you say they were? Like 20 these ounces? These are like 20 ounce glasses. So a whole bottle of Diet Coke could do this. <laughs> right. So, um, we'll actually give this a little sniff. Now, as everyone at home can see, that's quite, well, we don't really have a good white surface, but uh, it's quite gold, based on the wall, yeah. which you can't see. This wall is green, that wall is not. Ooh. There's always that, um, that smell. <laughs> yeah, that smell, but they obviously know. Um, yeah, you get a bit of citrus, which is a very common descriptor. I get a lot of honeydew, mm -hmm. that one coming out of it. Sometimes these can smell almost even like fruity pebbles. It's, a, it's an interesting, odd thing about Torontes. Torontes I'm actually more from, not that familiar with. I think in the wines classes, I think we may have tried one, between one and three of them, because I know I have read about them before. Yeah, these now, these are, um, they're pretty prevalent now. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of different producers. Not all the producers are necessarily good. Um, so you, sometimes you have to hunt around a bit, but almost all of them are under 10 bucks, which makes them a great value. You have a lot of acid um, when you start if you were to let it in China, it'd probably burn it. <laughs> um, there's a nice roundness though to it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit of like wet stone in there. Yeah. And you also get some of that fruit. And you get um, more of a bitter taste that sits on the back of your tongue, which is uh, kind of nice. You usually get that with like even a uh, grapefruit or something. Yeah, it's a little bit like the pith mm -hmm. of the fruit. So the white part that separates the skin and the fruit itself. Mm. It's that thing, that taste that I can't describe. Um, it's a very um. It's not even the problem is it's not even stone fruit. It's like it's like an underripe apricot. Yeah, you know almost. I was gonna say apricot, but usually like a lot of times people associate apricot with those bright like squishy wrinkly ones, um, not so much the fresh ones. So yes. come black. That's Fun a good one. Definitely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely higher acid, but there's a lot of sweetness to it too. Alright. So let's move on to uh, Cassiero de Diablo. 
I'll, uh, yeah, I'll dump here that. And then um, we're going to have Leanne go through the rite of passage on First Bar Wine. We've had uh, such a good track record with this in the past that we've decided that uh, we should have another guest give it a go. Little does he know, I used to work at Onger and we are stressed all the time. <laughs> so yeah, the idea of having to uh, open bottles while shaking ferociously, totally common. Actually, I think I'd prefer dealing with the camera over dealing with discontent fake Italian people. Who loves working in Olive Garden? Who doesn't love it? Yeah. Speaking of Italy, Great, really do a little Italian trick right now. And baptize the glasses and wash out that other one. Mm -hmm. Trying to make a huge mess of the room. Actually, you can see the nice uh, legs, which a lot of people like to talk about, but don't really actually mean much. Um, they have a complex phenomenon that has to do a lot with the alcohol. <coughs> and we have a cat with us today who's very fascinated by aluminum foil. So if the lighting goes a little bit darker in a second, you're going to know what happened. He's a jerk, <laughs> but he's my jerk. And he's looking straight at you now. Uh huh, he knows. <laughs> so this. Much darker. This is just pretty much black. Mm, this is why I love Malbecs. Malbecs, like, there's just a certain body you get with the Malbec, and it's, it's much more satisfying than a Merlot. A lot of people like to go, oh, Malbec's the exact same as Merlot, but I, I totally disagree. Now, Carbonara would be another story. Mm, definitely. Now, there's a, I get a lot of Ooh. wood and pepper. Right off the bat. Hint of cinnamon also. Cinnamon and there's a little bit of dried fruit in there. I get a little bit of vanilla and smoke as well. Yeah, there's a little bit of sweetness. I guess that's a vanilla. Mm. Yeah, I'm looking for the fruit still. It's it's the closest it might get is a little bit plummy. Yeah. Very oak forward. Yeah, the, upon first sip, you can definitely taste that pepper coming out. I'm such a sucker for pepper wines. A um, lot of mm. black pepper, um, I get, a little bit of jamminess on the first hit of your tongue. Yeah, there's a nice blackberry background in it, I think. A little bit of plum skin. A little bit of raspberry, too. But more of like a raspberry jam, but not the sugar, than mm. just a, like a concentrated raspberry rather than fresh. Yeah, it's, um, on that being said, it's not super tannic. The nice part about Malbec is that it's rather balanced. It's got a nice medium body to it. Mm. It's not going to overwhelm you, but it's a good pairing for a lot of grilled meats. Um, or... <laughs> it also yeah. goes well with grilled vegetables. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, well, might as well touch on that quickly. Uh, one thing you can do is, uh, online there's a couple websites that if you're vegan or vegetarian, uh, a lot of uh, the wine like uh, production, sometimes they use uh, animal byproducts or uh, like eggs and things to filter out some stuff in the wine. So uh, with Casiero del Diablo, um, it's iffy. They won't tell people whether or not they use animal product. So I don't buy it as much as I used to. Um, and Leanne's going to be telling everybody a bit more about that in the next coming weeks, where mm -hmm. she'll be writing a little bit on the site about that. Yeah. So definitely feel free to stop by the site, www.firstbarwine.com, if you want to learn more about that or about either of these two wines from today. Um, you can also leave comments on the YouTube. We'd love to have more comments, more community discussion at, at any of our sites. Um, so whether it be YouTube, whether it be uh, on the site, either is good. Also, check us out on Facebook uh, and on Twitter at First Port Wine. Uh, and thanks for watching. We'll uh, definitely be sure to see you next week. And uh, cheers. <laughs>